Okay, turn it on. Let's get a little bit of practice in. Let's see what we've got in store today. Okay, keeping it nice and simple, straightforward. And let's just bring the bishop here as we do. So constantly practicing what you're comfortable doing sets your own kind of theory. I'm going to push this pawn here. So you will have played aces and type of opening um, for quite a while. So you're feeling comfortable with it. So you kind of know the nooks and crannies of that type of opening based on what the potential movements of the opponent are. And you'll never get it 100% proof because nobody plays the same. You know, everybody plays the game slightly different. There'll be the slightest of movements that sends it out of kilter and your own personal theory then is challenged. So you create new theories for yourself. So going to bring this bishop here, just x-raying through to the bishop, to the queen. Looking to get king safety. They've got highly elevated pawns, but as we say, the head of the snake usually does fall. And the back of the snake isn't supported at the minute, supported by the knight. So with an early queen move, we're looking, we're thinking, they're looking to just try and maybe get some sort of battery but that's not going to work so you've got to question why the queen's coming here is it looking to come across face off the king this way so that's what that looks like doing so we did say the head of the snake usually falls so i'm not going to castle just yet i don't want to lose the tempo in terms of attacking this pawn i could have castled and just waited but i'm feeling as I mentioned in one of the videos, sometimes you might just hold off of doing your castling and just keep a little bit more attacking or repositioning just to gain that extra bit of tempo in development. And that's what we're kind of doing here. We're hitting the head of the snake, keeping it as basic as possible. We still do have the options of the uh, king coming across. So the queen is looking to get itself over here, sighted in opposite our king. If we did bring this bishop here, I do believe they're going to attack and then we come here. Bishop is attacking the pawn, but is it really doing much damage? Is, is it going to end up getting traps there? Are we going to be looking to castle on the queen side? Do we take and just allow the queen to come here? Or do we just bring the bishop back altogether? Options. I'm actually going to bait the pawns down. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. So we still have time to take the pawn if we're going to do that or we could lock down. But I'm not really a fan of the lockdown seeing as I was born with the lockdown. <laughs> okay, so he's attacking, so gets rid of this. Gonna do a smaller piece attacking the higher piece. Just keep it simple. Now they're nicely developed. Are they working them together as a team? Um, I'm actually going to take the pawn probably think the queen's coming here to get this pawn so we'll have to push the queen yeah that's pretty straightforward push the queen up it's got a two on one here but the queen is under attack at the minute so i can't in cat picture that they're going to go here but i suppose the pawn could take the pawn but they're not doing that so he's got a two on one with the pawn here. So it looks like they're going to win the pawn. So we did get rid of the head of the snake anyway. So we don't need to lose too much sleep over that. Shall we develop this knight? Just keep it simple and straightforward. Always got to remember, you can't do much about stuff that can't be done much about. Improve your position around that area. So he's actually gone and got his bishop. Oh, I thought he tra trapped his bishop there. So we can push the pawn onto the bishop. It's a smaller piece attacking a higher piece also on the knight as well. So it's kind of like a little bit of a fork with this small piece, which is quite dangerous. So we're, they're probably going to scratch and bite like a cornered cat now. Do some crazy sacrifice of some sort. 
So it does take, so we'll take. Knight's protecting the bishop. I'm going to take the bishop here. And then we've got this pawn. So I'm going to take this pawn. Obviously, we need to get king's safety because it's all going a bit crazy. Uh, it looks like he's got a pawn. So I'm actually going to bring the rook up, still protecting the pawn and attack the bishop. So we did say it was going to go a little bit crazy, a bit manic. Maybe we can go queenside castling. Do we think if we go queenside castling, the bishop is going to take the pawn? We can push to block the king, um, block the bishop in. So queenside castle, bishop takes the pawn, push the pawn up to block. What's this rook doing? He's hitting there, then duh, 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 hits the knight. So a lot of stuff might start kicking off. I'm gonna go for it, risk it for a biscuit. So it's like a reverse Fisher Spassky type thing. It does go for it, so I'll just block it off and maybe the king can come and get the bishop. But I think he's gonna challenge our knight. Where does the knight go? Comes back here. Yeah, he's attacking the knight. Let's bring this here. It's kind of protecting this square, but this pawn's going to hit the knight. So we might not get the bishop off the board after all. Although it's be an exchange for an exchange, and let's go and attack because we we are a minor piece up, and he's actually defending. Ooh, a little bit clever there. We could attack the rook, but the rook is wanting to come here anyway. All right, so let's go for a pawn. Bishop attacking, x ray through to the pawn. So as we said before, you can't do anything about that. That doesn't want to be done anything about. Okay, that's nice touch. And now he's got a two on one here with the rook. I'm just still going to, I could still attack the rook. Let's take the pawn. And the knight's taken. We can take with the knight here, which is a good thing for us. But if we take, his rook takes our rook. Do we want to do that? Is there something better? I think there is something better, isn't there? Let's get rid of the rook, but the rook is just going to come up one, isn't it? Right. Let's save at the moment. They've actually clawed back by grabbing all the pawns. We still do have more minor pieces. I'm sure there's a move order that we can do. Think, think, think. Move the rook out of the way. And attack a pawn and then we're still on the bishop so then the knight would be able to take so let's go and attack this pawn here with the rooks taking it out of the line of sight of this rook here so they're giving giving us things to think about but let's see if we can take advantage of having the extra minor piece this rook is in the center of the board in a sense um, we need to probably get that activated somewhere so giving us things to think about rook attacking the bishop slowing us down attacking the rook rook comes up here attacking the bishop the knight is protecting so we're inferring we can just take the bishop off the board if that happened he is attacking, so going to attack the rook, like we said. So giving us things to think about. Let's give them something to think about. I'm assuming this is happening, and then we can take this um, bishop. But then the knight is going to whirlwind. Probably come here. Oh, okay, nice. Let's take this. Attacking the bishop. What happened there? Did he? Eh? Did he feel like he didn't have that square? It must have got a bit confusing. 
but it's not over yet um we do have the bishop but the bishop's going to move now because this knight the rook is x-raying through to the king so we'll, yes yeah, so they've moved but we can take and block so one of these pawns is going to try and come down because of the x-ray through onto the king rook could have taken this um but no he couldn't we have to wait because he's got the check on and they've resigned <clears throat> okay nice game okay 10 and 0 what do we have here today we just developed the night Let's just push the pawn, supporting the pawn. <clears throat> oh, I've got a plotter. in let's get ready for castling Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Okay, so they're dancing. Let's attack the knight. Oh, they're a dancer. Ho oh, ho ho. A slick little dancer. Let's go here. Let's play football in our own half. <laughs> See how you like them apples, eh? Let's attack the center. Let's attack the bishop. Yeah, there's a dancer. Well, I'm hoping he's shortening his range of movement and they pay the price for dancing. We don't do that because that's supporting that. Mm -hmm. Must be some magical thing I'm missing. Oh, this is nice. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. Let's go with that one. I think it's just going for an exchange, getting the bishop here. Although he's a dancer, he's not wanting to take stuff. Let's take the knight. Now he's happily open this area. He's not doing that. Okay. Not sure what happened there. Rook's got this bishop. I think it's gone wrong, hasn't it? All the dancing, they seem to have lost space and the team's not working together. That's what it looks like anyway. Um... Queen's got no protection on, but if we just move here, maybe not there. Move here, because the knight's going to come here, get a fork. Bishop's protecting. Attack the bishop. Bishop just goes into the corner. Attack the bishop. Two on one. Surprised the queen didn't come down. It's going to hit our rook. It's getting activated. Let's just attack. 
Rook's got their pawn if we need it. King's looking a bit airy. Can't get to it. Rook's in the center of the board. Woo! Has no place being there. It's all kicking off. Okay, and the dancer. We could hit the queen. Where's the queen going? Oh, we could just hit the bishop. Let's just hit the bishop. And keep a focus, get these pieces in the game, take, take. Really need to get this taken. And hit the queen. Are we sending him somewhere? I don't want to send him anywhere, really. Take the pawn. Just nice and steady. Try and savor the moment. Is the queen coming? What is the... Okay, take. Queen can't come here for a check. I think they've given up, haven't they? I think they've given up. Put a check on the king. With the knight. It's a bit too much dancing, won't it? Bishop attacking. It's not, he can't come down here because... Checkmate. Nice one. Ten and oh, just practicing the casual chess play. Just hitting the center. Let's grab the knight. So, as mentioned in the earlier video, uh, when you're practicing your your chess and you practicing maybe the same opening time and time and time and time again and um, you're creating your own version of theory it's your version of theory it might be identical to the official types of brain scientist professor type theories but so long as you're comfortable with it and you know it's your you know it's yours you've done it from your own experience um then feel comfortable that that is the type of thing that you you are willing to develop going forward based on using evaluations as well afterwards. Um, it's your own thought process that you're actually using to create the moves on the board because you're familiar with the patterns, etc. And so for me, let's attack the queen. Don't think they'll exchange. Yeah, so for me, knowing that you have done it yourself, you've created your own theories yourself. And then if you then start doing some sort of research and, oh, they've taken, you start, start doing some research and you're looking a bit more deeply into the openings that you're using, you can then compare, you know, the thought processes of other people. Um, but you're not actually tied down to their thought processes because there's been thousands of, I'll say millions, but there's been thousands of um, people putting their two pen off in regarding what the theory is around certain openings. But if you sat there and said, well, okay, I'm just going to follow their rationale, then do you feel that it's your game? Or do you feel like you've just um, kind of found the answer to a puzzle but then when that opponent doesn't do the theory, then when you're playing your game, then you're kind of stuck. You're left with nothing. So when you're doing your own theory and you're practicing your own games, you have something to fall back on because you've created it. And it's your soul, it's your character, it's your, it's your being that's in that opening. It's not a scholastic type of research based on somebody else's um, emotions and tactics and whatever at that moment in time it's based on you your own area it's so key it's really important um because we can really get hung up on what other people tell us about chess and how to play chess or ideas and concepts but realistically 
when you have a look at the history of that individual person, um, all they're doing is they're doing their own research. But we as humans, we tend to go, right, okay, that person's done it this way, so this is what we expect. And then you get all these brainy people coming in there and, and really taking over the show and mathematicians and all sorts working out all these different calculations. And then you think, wow, I'm not good enough to actually say anything about theory or anything. Um, but when you look at the players who played the games, they were playing the games at that moment in time, utilising their experience of their own theory. And then theory became theory, theory, based on, you know, the next person who played and the next person who played. But <clears throat> the originators of openings, etc., they used their own theories to create their openings. And it's not that they went out there and says, oh, I want this opening to be named me. They just played their game. But for people to gain control and think that they kind of own the game of chess, they put a label to certain things and it takes away the soul. It takes away the ingenuity. It takes away innovation. So while you're in your games, don't think theory of others. Think theory of your theory in the game at this moment. See, I'm not really liking my rooks being in this position because we're kind of just biting on granite and this pawn is going to start pushing down. I'm not saying that that's a strong position for them. But it just doesn't look like it's going to get much weight. I'm going to have to push maybe, but then it can just block down and then if we push, then it's take, 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 take. So I'm going to have to do this or else I'm having to reshuffle my rooks to come here around and around. Maybe I shouldn't be too scared of this pawn manoeuvre or this pawn manoeuvre because his rooks are biting on thin air as well, really. So we're going to try and go for this. Maybe get this pawn pushed up to maybe support a little bit more of the attack here. So it's not much of anything, but we do have the rooks supporting each other with a potential attack. So that's simple theory in a sense <laughs> i think theory as well runs out after a, a, few, a certain amount of moves when you've done your opening because then after that it always it's always based on what the opponent does or the movement that you make um after the opponent so theory does tend to run out a little bit early on probably maybe on the 13th or 14th move if it's not clear if it's a clear thing of basic type stuff then so they're blocking off this um, attack here, but we can still hit this pawn because we do have the bishop support in here. It doesn't have to take by any means because this pawn is probably just going to drop and hit the um, hit the rook. So they've not <coughs> excuse me, they've not done that. So we could take the pawn, opening up space in front of the king. So I'm going to take the pawn, just keeping it simple. Again, he could just hit the pawn here, but the bishop can now take the pawn and there's space in front of the king. Oh, we can take the pawn, obviously, here. And his rooks are on the other side of the board, so they're going to be trying to either go here. I think probably going here is better, isn't it? Because they can hide here. So here, here, hiding away. Oh, they've not done that. So the rook could take the pawn. And if the bishop takes, we can take the bishop. And again, that's not clear either, really. But the rooks are on the other side. Uh, do, 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 do. He's coming for a trade, maybe no. Yeah, so that's it's not clear. So if we came up, and then if he did come to challenge, could just end up being a draw, really. But we could hit this pawn here comes around don't really want them on in the file okay let's bring it up keep it real simple if we have to go for a draw we have to go for a draw we're plus two though so maybe we want to try and push it a bit got a pawn advantage on this side pawn majority on this side looks like their signal might be going oh and they've left the game well resigned. Excellent. 
I just want to see though. I'm going to just check the analysis and let's have a look. Ooh, plus four, but plus fours can be beaten. You know, the maximum is minus seven or plus seven, um, where really you should be out and out and out winning. Whereas this isn't really an out and out win. It's plus four. It looks nice, but in real terms, if you're playing this over the board, it could it could go either way. You know, it all depends on the movements. Okay, good game.